Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do more dark fiction reviews. So this is going to be a combination of horror thrillers, mysteries, and other dark creepy books. And I've really decided in my channel that going forward, especially in the new year, I want to really focus on just reading dark messed up books and kind of making that my channel goal and mission when it comes to my Tuesday stabby reviews. Just because I've realized that while I do love horror, I feel like it's kind of a limiting label for my channel because really what I like is messed up and disturbing books and well often enough horror overlaps with those topics but I also don't want to limit myself to a particular genre and that's honestly the reason I got into horror is that I love books that challenge me that disturb me that make me feel uncomfortable and so today I've got some of those books for you all today some books that were really messed up as well as other books that don't worry are more safe for a wider audience so whether you enjoy dark and messed up things like me or looking for just a really good thriller I do have some great recommendations recommendations for you all and hopefully my voice holds out for this video. I am pretty sick so I've got my tea over here in my favorite mug from my husband and hopefully we all get to the end of the video without <laughs> losing our voices. Uh, if you lose your voice that'd be kind of weird but anyway let's get started. First let's talk about The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks and this is a bit of a literary thriller that follows a young boy who is a sociopath. He finds out from his father who is also quite strange that his brother is coming home. He has been locked away at a sort of mental institution and has escaped. And we follow this young boy as he goes around the island preparing for his brother's return. And within the story you find out that he has committed a lot of harm to animals and also other creatures and people let's say. And so the story is really him recounting his childhood, how he got to be what he is, and also reflecting on his brother and his home life and so forth. I will say that while I'm calling this a thriller, it is really more of a literary character study. It doesn't have a lot of plot or it's not very thrilling in terms of like action and adventure. But what it is, is very disturbing, which again is exactly what I was going for with this video. I just really wanted to get back to my roots and find a book that would be incredibly uncomfortable. And when I Googled those lists online, when I went to BuzzFeed and all those websites, everyone listed The Wasp Factory and I've had it recommended to me several times on previous videos on my channel. So thank you to all of you that told me that this was going to be a really messed up book because well, it was. Of course, huge charm to animal content warnings for anyone that is sensitive to that and I really liked the characters in terms of their psyches. I loved getting inside their head. They really were truly disturbing and that was exactly what I was looking for. In terms of the narrative I can't exactly call it fun because it really did get dark and disturbing and I'm not exactly sure how I feel about the ending. I think the ending did a good job of leaving me feeling very disgusted. It kind of was like a gut punch moment that kind of left me feeling a bit dirty for reading the book but at the same time I've said before that I would rather have that than a book that I'm indifferent to, a book that I have no feelings on because I have no connection to the story. This one is just very unsettling. I love that the author just goes there and doesn't hold back and it's a very memorable read. It's a very dark read. Can I just say that? often enough and I do think that if you're looking for a book that's really going to push the limits this is an excellent one to check out. I definitely want to read the author's space opera which I know a lot of people really love and of course won't be as dark and messed up as this. I think it's a little bit more mainstream. And next we have Crash by J.G. Ballard and this is a book that I believe was recommended by a commenter or subscriber so thank you so much for telling me about this book because I had not heard about it at all but basically it's a literary creepy dark fiction book that involves a man who is sexually aroused by car crashes, which sounds like the most ridiculous setup or premise for a book ever, and I was really excited for it. I will say that the writing style was actually quite pleasing and beautiful in places. The way that he describes the car crashes and the effects on a person's body at times were, like I said, almost like lyrical, and it's just like I was like, wow, these are really beautiful prose. And at the same time, this book was really disgusting because it is describing car crashes and the physical effects that it has on a person's body. And so keep it all in mind. I like this book, but in terms of the narrative structure, I did feel like it kind of wandered around. I am someone who, as I've said so many times on my channel, I really like a tight, cohesive narrative. And I felt like this book did meander. Did it meander into some fun locations and explore some really fun ideas? Absolutely. I liked how unique this book was. I liked how out of the box it was. I'll be honest, it's the kind of book that I enjoyed telling my friends that I was reading just because who doesn't want to tell your friends? that you're reading a book about a man sexually aroused by car 
crashes. It's so out of the box and I did have fun reading it. Again, it wasn't a perfect read, but definitely one that left an impression on me. And yeah, surprisingly beautiful prose, which I never say about books. And next is Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. And this is actually a young adult horror book that follows a young man who is running away from a fundamental religious cult where they have turned him into a bioengineered super weapon or a bit of a monster and then he escapes and finds refuge within an LBGT center and you find out that this young individual is a trans boy and so he's very much dealing with that because as you would expect from a religious fundamental cult they are particularly accepting of those that are non-heteronormative let's say. So let me start by acknowledging that I don't tend to really love young adult books but this one really surprised me. It still followed some of the tropes of YA that I don't normally like. Particularly you should know that there is a heavy romance element within this book which normally would drive me nuts. There is a male-male romance and it was very tropey and predictable at places. There is a bit of the brooding aspect that does he like me, does he not? And normally I would hate that stuff but I kind of ate it up which I don't know if I should admit but I really thought it was well done and I got totally pulled into the story. If you cannot stand romance in your YA books this one may not be for you but there is so much more to the story that I thought was very well done. Of course as you would expect with an own voices story like this the trans representation I thought was very nuanced and complex and was woven into the story in a way that I felt fit the story very well and was just a wonderful addition to a really great horror story. I don't always love these like post-apocalyptic type narratives but this one worked incredibly well. I thought that the world building was fantastic. I want to know more about the angels and the creature that this young trans boy had been turned into and I loved how that was revealed. This book is fierce and gruesome and doesn't pull punches. For a young adult book I thought this one really went there and didn't kind of give you a cutesy version of the story. Cutesy well, I should say it was cutesy again in terms of the romance. The romance was super cutesy, but the actual story behind it was really fierce and I thought it was a really powerful story with great messaging and I surprised myself. I really liked it. It was definitely one of the best 2022 releases I've read so far this year and I think if you are open to reading Young Adult, this is another one you'll definitely want to pick up. Next, let's talk about The Born Identity by Robert Ludlum. And this is a thriller that most of you probably know because of the movie. I'm a huge fan of the three movies, especially the first one, all done, of course, with Matt Damon, who's one of my favorite actors. And so I've probably watched that movie at least 15 times, at least the first one, and the other ones I've seen several times since. And I love them, so I was always eager to check out the source material. In this case, I thought that the book was good, but I actually do prefer the movie. The setup is fairly similar where you follow a man who wakes up without his memory which is a trope that is perhaps overdone but I love it personally. So he wakes up without his memory but you find out pretty early on that he's kind of tied into some espionage and spies and all of that and the story goes from there as people chase after him. What is hilarious or terrible about the book depending on your mood when you're reading it is the forced love interest because similar to the movie but kind of worse he grabs this woman and treats her as a hostage. He treats her as a human shield he physically hurts her, he threatens her, and then he ends up getting her in a very difficult, terrible situation where her life is threatened by other men that are chasing after him. And he saves her from the men that were chasing him, and then she treats him like her hero, and they fall in love. It is so problematic, so toxic, so messed up. So it's kind of funny to read all the Goodreads reviews because you just have a bunch of like feminist people ranting how it's the worst relationship ever. I took it with a huge grain of salt and just like laugh my head off that any author would see this as romantic and so just go into the book knowing that it's got a super problematic relationship right in the center of the story. As for the thriller parts I thought it was fun, it was easy going, I didn't think it was anything special, the prose wasn't anything amazing but it did the job and kind of got me through a couple of slumpy days so I recommend it. If you love the movie you might want to check out the book. Next up is Anywhere You Run by Wanda M. Morris and this is a book I received from the publisher for review. This is a historical thriller that is set in the 19th 60s and follows two black women that are running away from their hometown for different reasons. One is running away because she accidentally killed a man or was forced to kill a man and you also follow another woman who has accidentally gotten pregnant and is forced to run away as well. And while this book is marketed as a thriller I would much more define it as historical fiction. It has a thriller element 
to the premise, but it really doesn't read like a thriller in my opinion based off the narrative tropes that I'm looking for. It didn't really have that page turner thrilling quality to it. Instead, it's much more a character explanation of these two women and really the time period and what it would be like to be a black woman in this period where you're very much discriminated against and seen through these colored lenses. And so I think it's a book that has very important themes and topics in it, but I don't read a lot of historical fiction, so I didn't enjoy this one as much as I would have liked. Again, I just felt like it was a bit of a bait and switch where a book was labeled as a thriller when I think it should be better qualified as being historical fiction and then the right readers will pick it up in that case. So if you like historical fiction, this one might be up your alley. If you're looking for a thriller, this one probably won't give you that experience. Next, I want to talk about The Last Child by John Hart, which is a coming-of-age thriller that follows a young boy whose twin sister years ago disappeared and perceived to have been kidnapped. And so he spends his time looking for his lost sister, trying to figure out where she is. Is she still alive? You find out that his home life has fallen apart. His father has fled out of guilt. His mother has gotten very ill and sick and is in a toxic relationship. And so the only person that he really has is his childhood best friend who goes along with him as he tries to investigate and puzzle out what happened to his sister. And then we also get the perspective in the story of the detective who was involved in the initial investigation and has not let the case go. And then as the story opens, you find out that another young woman has gone missing. And so of course you always get the opening question of are these related? And the story picks up from there. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was incredibly well done in terms of the character work. I found the characters very relatable, very engaging. I thought this book had a lot of emotional depth to it. I I felt very deeply to, for the characters and I am someone who is a sucker for a story where you have a child who's kind of in a not perfect home. I just could read those stories over and over again and this one just hit me in the feels. I did expect the book to be rather predictable and I am pleasantly surprised to say that I kind of guessed who was going to be behind it all and it was totally wrong which is always a good surprise and so I like that there were some twists and turns that I didn't see coming, some that were perhaps a little bit more easier to spot but overall I found this to be an engaging story and I just lapped it all up and I think that again if you enjoy thrillers with a lot of character focus or if you love a coming-of-age narrative where a boy's innocence is just torn away from him this book will definitely appeal to you as well. I thought it was really well done and I definitely want to check out more by this author so if you have read anything else by John Hart please let me know because I plan on reading his entire backlist. I was so impressed by this book. Highly recommend it. And finally, I want to talk about Toil and Trouble, A Woman's History of the Occult. This is a book that I received for review from Cork Books. And this is exactly what it sounds. It is a book, a nonfiction account of witches. So the book itself is a beautiful object. So again, if you're looking for something to gift, this is definitely one you might want to consider. But I was thought I was going to call this book like a coffee table book and be like, oh, it's cute to put on your coffee table. But then I actually started reading it and was very impressed. It's very well documented. It has a great history that is easy to follow for someone like myself who doesn't read a lot of nonfiction, but there's a lot of substance to this one. So it has a history, but then it also goes into modern manifestations of witchdom, if that's a word. And so it talks about like witch talk and a lot of how people practice today. I'll admit, I've never been someone who's been involved in witch culture. It's not something I personally know a lot about before reading this. So I thought that was very interesting. If you were someone who was either a practicing witch yourself or just someone who is fascinated by that culture, I think you will absolutely love this book. But even for someone like myself, who's very much on the sidelines, who kind of thinks it's interesting, but I don't really get it, I thought that this book was great of kind of filling in those blanks. It also has great representation. It's focused around women, but also acknowledges non-binary folks and really is very inclusive in how it is written. And again, I just thought it was like a really cool idea. And yeah, I thought it was yeah, very solid. And this is coming from someone who does not read a lot of nonfiction, but this one really held my attention. And I do recommend it if you're looking for a witch book. So that's it for this video. Let me know of the books I talked about which ones are you planning on checking out I know it was a little bit of a grab bag of a video with a couple of messed up books at the start so yes my goal for 2023 because I'm probably not going to put out a whole reading goals video is honestly to return back to my roots not that I'm not going to read horror but I'm not going to limit myself to one genre I'm not going to just read books that are perfectly labeled as horror thrillers etc but I'm just going to look for the most messed up disturbing books that I can read and if I like them I'll let you know if I don't I'll either dnf them or give you a a 
mediocre review. And if that sounds good, I hope you stick around. Of course, I will continue to review books that are less messed up for those of you that don't quite have my stomach for disturbing matter. So again, if you're looking for a really good read that is a little bit easier to stomach, I do recommend, again, The Last Child. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, thriller, science fiction, fantasy, and true crime. If you want to help me out with this video, you can give me a thumbs up, share it around online, drop a comment. Even if it's just an emoji, like give me a messed up emoji. I want to see what you got. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.